Hello everyone. Uh, I wanted to make a quick video to show how I made a whole YouTube video on Ableton in case anyone is curious. Um, right off the bat, I did not do this entirely with just Ableton stock effects. Um, I use a plugin called Evo Suite. I'll put a link in the description. It's a little pricey, but I've been using it for other work over the last couple months and I've discovered it's pretty powerful. And I personally hate Premiere Pro. I just, I, 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 it has never worked well with my brain and I was curious to see if I could make a whole video basically using Ableton's interface. And I did, but I also encountered a lot of problems. Um, so it's definitely not perfect. But I did discover some really interesting things you can do with Ebo Suite and Ableton. So uh, I'm going to show you, but right off the bat, we're going to hit problem number one. I guarantee you this project file will not open. Um, this is a weird bug that I discovered uh, with Ebo Suite. It runs fine once it's all up inside of Ableton. But if you close Ableton, chances are you're not going to be able to open the project file again. Uh, I discovered a workaround for this, <laughs> but here I'll show you what happens if I try to open this. So right now, the the thing that's caught the thing that's causing the problem right now is that it's trying to load Evo Suite itself, which is a third party application that's a, that gives you a bunch of video add-ons to Ableton. It works best with ProRes footage. I did not know that until after I was deep into the edit of this video. And I would have had to convert all my footage, and I didn't want to do that. <laughs> so I powered through it, and the price I paid is that it just can't, it just can't seem to open any of it. Okay, all right, we're back. So as you saw um, right off the bat, if you don't plan ahead, you're gonna have some real problems. One workaround I found um, is that you can basically go into the, uh, the project that you want to work on again after you've closed Ableton and you can drag everything into a new project. That seems to fix the error, um, but let's see if this works. <laughs> um, I swear this is cool. Uh, once I get it working and am able to show you, I'm, I swear that it's pretty cool. Right. Behind me is the Going Mary. That is the boat from Netflix's live action One Piece. It's on a beach. All right. Uh, so it's definitely not working well. Um, <laughs> it's, it's definitely having some issues. Um, but let's see. Behind me is the Going Mary. So it's not even, it's, it's not even loading right now. But <laughs> I can show you some things that I, uh, is cool about this. So first, let me walk through the project file. So I, uh, I'm in Rio de Janeiro. I went to a event for the live action One Piece. And I wanted to make a little vlog about it. And part of the reason I even tried this in the first place was because I'm trying to get better at just making content for YouTube learning how to make stuff really quickly, turn it around while I'm still excited about it. I'm not really being precious with how it looks or how it sounds. I'm just trying to do it. So I apologize for anyone following this channel wondering why things look like butt all the time, but that's pretty much why. So I went out, took my phone, and I shot a bunch of footage, uh, and I dumped it in here. So this is the me uh, file. So if you've ever used Ableton, you'll understand uh, how this is all set up. So this is a track for my main uh, uh, footage of me, and then this is a secondary track, which I think is really cool. I was able to basically cut in. So every time I wanted to cut or do a jump cut and make it look nice, I was able to apply that effect to this track super easy. And then it was just a matter of organizing the clips in the order that I wanted, which is great. I, I, I couldn't believe how easy this part was. Then I grouped them. Uh, it, Ableton allows you to group tracks together. So I did a me group, and that's when I started applying audio effects, which was also really cool. So 
I had some technical issues this week. I ended up having to rely on my old trusty wired headphone, which is honestly really great. And once I threw it through a de and uh, some EQ, I was able to make it sound pretty much passable. And then we get to the Ebo Suite part. So these are Max for Live plugins that come with Ebo Suite, and they're really, really interesting. Uh, you can do a lot with them. Uh, you can also apply what's called an e-group effect, which takes a group and then of tracks and lets you put Ebo Suite plugins on it. Uh, I did discover an issue with this though, because I wanted to be able to put master effects across all of my videos. Uh, so I put them in a videos group, which it consists of other groups. Turns out the E group plugin only recognizes the base group. It doesn't rec uh, recognize groups beyond that group. Anyways, um, so as you can see, I've got uh, kind of like a glitch effect here, a uh, RGB shifter, and some blurring, which I use later in the video. Um, the next group of video tracks I have, uh, I called B-roll, and that's basically just like shots from around Rio as I was walking around, uh, shots of the One Piece boat. And once again, I organized them into a couple different groups, and then I put them through another group, and once again, the E-group plugin worked great. I was able to uh, throw effects onto all the B-roll and have it work totally differently than, uh, and, you know, anything else. And then here we have uh, graphics, uh, which is basically just like any any kind of overlay I wanted. So uh, this one uh, this one here is for a map effect I did, uh, which took almost no time at all. I was, I was really shocked at how easy this was, and I'll show you why it was so easy. I actually think Ableton's automation is better than pretty much any program I've ever used. Um, and so I was able to make my head, a little cut out of my head, move across a map, and I was able to do that simply by uh, moving the position Y on this track transform plugin. Um, you can see position X, position Y, and that's for moving graphics around the screen. And I was able to make a motion graphic with it. And then even cooler, uh, because of the master effects on this group, I was able to throw a little glitch effect going into the graphic and going out. And then this is where it gets really, really exciting. So um, if you go to the map channel, what I did was I have a glitch and an RGB shifter on it. And both of these are being controlled by uh, a group, which is then fed into an envelope follower, uh, which is an Ableton plugin that basically takes the waveform of tracks and uses it to control parameters and other tracks. So this envelope follower is actually moving the map graphic to the beat of the song, which was like super easy to set up and I, I could not believe how, how, how good it looked. I, I really was impressed by it. In terms of the lower thirds, this one is funny. So it sounds really complicated, but I swear it's not. Um, this is a drum track running uh, what's called an e-simpler. It's an Ebo Suite plugin. And it in each of these is a PNG. So I basically just made lower thirds on Photoshop and then loaded them into a MIDI track. And as you can see, I just trigger each one with my MIDI channel. It sounds really complicated. Once you get into the habit of doing it, uh, it's, it's not hard at all. And the control you have over it is once again, kind of mind blowing. And as you can see here, I have my glitch RGB shift happening with just basic automation. Um, I was I was really impressed. And then up here is all the music. So uh, I don't know if anyone has noticed this, but for my channel, I make all the music. I do it because I enjoy it. I, I make music and I'm looking for an excuse to, to make more. So I have a program uh, for drums that I, I, I was sort of generating different drum patterns. And then uh, <laughs> don't tell uh, YouTube copyright, but this here is a sample. Um, from uh, one piece, uh, I chopped it up real, real, real sneaky to give uh, give the song a little kind of like electric guitar thing going on. And then I was able to mix the audio really, really easily. Um, my voice is coming in and out, uh, you know, pretty nicely. Um, 
here's another interesting thing I did here. So uh, I have all of the music going into a group, which sort of acts as a bus. And then I was able to automate the track volume just in really basic ways. Whenever I was talking, I wanted the music to go down a little bit. Obviously, I could use, I, I try, actually, I tried using a compressor for this, and it didn't work super well because there's a ton of background noise from my audio track because I was out filming on the street. Um, but all in all, like, it's, I thought it sounded really nicely, and I was able to do, like, really fun uh, transition effects with Ableton's auto filter. So at certain points in the video, uh, the melody section of the score you know, goes through a filter effect and it sounds really fun and, and drops out and drops back in. Um, and all of this was just absolutely painless. I, I, I could not believe how easy this was. Um, the problem with, uh, with, with, with doing this this way, though, I discovered very quickly, uh, I encountered my first real bug um, while trying to master this. So I have a template for my Ableton set, which is just a very basic master bus rack. Um, you know, it gives me some headroom to play with. I wanted to put Pro Q on this, which is a great mastering plugin. I can't even open it right now on this because I know that it's gonna it's gonna break my computer. But the minute I put that mastering software on the first version of this project file, it just completely died. And that's when I discovered the bug uh, where you can't open it. Now, I plan to do some experiments with this and ProRes um, footage to see if it makes it any better. The other issue that I ran into, um, in the final version, there's a section here where I'm talking about different neighborhoods in Sao Paulo and I use B-roll from different YouTube creators. <laughs> Ebo Suite went insane when I tried to put multiple video tracks on top of each other. As you can see, there's really no overlap. Uh, this was a very simple vlog and anytime you know, there was B-roll or something, I'm not really narrating the B-roll. It's, it's very minor if it happens. And when it does happen, um, you know, it's, it's, it's for a very short period of time. Trying to do this uh, with, with like actual narration, uh, impossible. And the reason it's impossible is because Ableton views these video clips as audio clips and Ebo Suite is what is recognizing them as videos, right? So you can't really do the thing you can do in other video editing software where they're different. It doesn't recognize them as different, uh, which is annoying. And then that takes us to the last issue here. So there are a couple ways to record an arrangement in Ebo Suite. Um, the main way is using Siphon and a little plugin here called Video Send. And Video Send creates a uh, a master stream. It goes to a it goes to a program called Siphon. Siphon records it. You can set all the different parameters for the quality of the recording, but the problem is you have to play it. So my computer. Um, very quickly became very, very angry with me because I was playing uh, totally uncompressed music files, music effects, video, all at the same time. Uh, I did a couple different uh, attempts at this where I tried to do just audio, just video. Uh, ultimately, what I, what I ended up doing was just the video, then just the audio, and put them together in Premiere, and then I used... Uh, Premiere to do some final editing touches. So it wasn't completely in Ableton, um, but I, I, I kind of pushed it to its limit. The thing is, this would be a perfect program for, for me. Uh, the reason uh, I like this is because I make music. I think in terms of music DAWs, I'm not super good at editing video, and I want to edit video really fast because I'm moving around, I'm really busy, and I want to make more content for this channel. So all those things mean that like, if I can just make a song and then throw some video on there and, and put it all together in one place, that'd be great. Uh, but I don't think it's gonna work. And it's mostly not gonna work because of the export process. Like if I wanted to make some fun motion graphics and overlays set to music and, and have their parameters controlled by uh, the waveforms of my song, it would be super easy to do that in Ableton, but the problem is at the end of the day, like I still have to export them uh, with 
siphon and it's just not gonna look good. And you'll notice in the video that there are weird delays and, and laggy moments and I just, I would have had to start the video over from scratch. Now, after doing this and sort of learning like what I wanted out of a, a video program, I started uh, doing some research to see if any other programs do this sort of thing. And best I can tell, um, you can do a version of uh, snapping the uh, music to a BPM. So as you can see here, uh, my drum tracks are all nicely timed out to the BPM, which is 115, and then I'm able to lay different video clips in different measures, super, super easy. Apparently you can do this in Premiere with a couple different plugins or just manually uh, doing the math of how many uh, beats per minute equals how many clips per second. I've seen people do that. There's a bunch of different ways. Uh, I've also been looking into uh, DaVinci Resolve, which apparently does have a BPM grid in its uh, music section. I've never used it before, uh, but I'm definitely curious. So in conclusion, if you want to do this, you should try it. it I, I think Zwobot is another uh, set of uh, plugins like Ebo Suite that does a similar thing, adding video capabilities to Ableton. They all, though, run into the same problem, which is that you have to screen, essentially screen record uh, to get the video out of Ableton, which, uh, you know, your mileage may vary on. But it was definitely a cool experiment, and I might try to use this again in certain ways. I am curious about whether or not ProRes footage would make this look better and, 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 and operate better. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about this, let me know. Uh, I also have like a template for doing this. If, if, if anyone's crazy enough to want to try, happy to share it with you. Uh, leave a comment, uh, let me know. And uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for watching my little tutorial recorded in my hotel room. I, I wanted this out uh, at the same time as the video that I made in Ableton because I worried that people would look at it and go, you know, what? Why does it look like this? Um, oh, and I can't show you this because it's on the master uh, chain for, <laughs> it's on the master chain for the file project I can't open. But I did even attempt to use Ebo Suite for color correction. So as you can see here, they have all these great effects. And once again, all these effects can be controlled by envelope followers on any audio track, which is kind of amazing. You can basically, you can start to do some really powerful things with this. And there is an RGB plugin and it looks like this. Uh, and you can just change the parameters of red, green, and blue. And there's even a dry and wet signal for it. Uh, and I tried it. it, it made everything look different. I don't know if it looked better, but it definitely looked different. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that, that is my great experiment with Ableton as a video editing software. Would I recommend it? No. No, I would not. Um, but it was a fun experiment, and, and who knows? Maybe I'll find a way to use it in the future. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you want the template or have any questions, and uh, yeah. Bye-bye.